Um, the wheel lathe was built in 1921 uh, by Craven Brothers in Reddish in Manchester. Um, pretty much most of the industry that you see, the old industry of today around the world, uh, comes from the UK and Manchester in particular. Um, the machine was decommissioned roughly about the mid-80s by the then um, South African Railways or then the predecessor Spurnet, um, simply because they didn't need to do steam loco wheel turning. Um, because of the fact that they were running diesel and electric and steam was being phased out by the early 90s already. Um, when Reef Steamers took over the facility from Spurnet at the time um, and created Reef Steamers officially in 1995, the machine had stood since then, the mid-80s up until about 95, unused. Um, from there, with the deterioration of the building, the roof um, you know, was taken off by a very bad windstorm and it just continued to deteriorate. So we just basically preserved the machine by covering it with a sail just to keep it safe. And about four years ago, we decided that there's now starting to be a need because we have wheels to turn for our locos. And instead of contracting it out to somebody else to do it, in a lot of cases they can't because the wheel's above five foot in diameter, we decided, well, let's rebuild our machine. And it had major mechanical problems because it was obviously just worn out, it's been so old. And we did a full rebuild. New gearboxes, new gears were made, new centers. Um, the motor was fully stripped and uh, you know, refurbished by Tomco uh, motors, um, or motor rewinders. Um, it was certified. We had uh, RWW Engineering sponsor us the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the modern soft start, basically, um, so that you can start the machine just with a press of a button. Mm -hmm. It'll do the startup process, mm -hmm. being, being so large. Um, so yeah, it was, it was four years in the process. Um, a lot of that was on and off. It wasn't four years full time. We've fitted a new roof to the building, repaired the gantry, and the machine's now in a state where it's operational, um, and we're testing it now. Um, so we're just going to do all the testing phases with the test wheel we've got in, just to check that all the settings and stuff is correct. The feeds and speeds is obviously critical. Um, at the moment, it's only turning at 2.4 RPM, so it's basically 2.4 revolutions per minute. Um, surface speed on that's about 8 meters a minute, which is relatively slow, considering that a lot of modern machines are turning about uh, 1,800 meters a, a minute. Um, the intention of the machine, once she's fully operational and we're happy with it, is to obviously, um, it, it'll need a paint, the building needs a refurbishment as well, but the intention of it is to turn essentially our own wheels in-house, um, a lot of the locos needing turning, um, and to obviously incorporate that into turning the wheels for the sandstone contract which have been awarded. Um, and there, there may be clients out there that need their local wheels turned. I mean, there are a couple of clubs in the country still operating steam and most locos wheels are getting to the point now that they've been used for so many years in preservation that they need turning. Um, one of the bigger clients will probably be uh, companies like in Botswana where they still use steam on some of the mines. Um, and there's a couple around South Africa as well. So it's not going to be a big thing. We're not going to be turning a hundred wheel sets a year, but we can at least, we've got the machine, it's operational, if the need arises, we can turn wheels. And I think it's also just the historical value of it is important. Um, you know, a machine of that, from that era, being preserved into working order, it's, it's quite rare, um, not only in South Africa, but around the world. Mm -hmm.